If you're watching this video, you must be interested in learning about zero-shot time series forecasting using large language models. Well, look no further. I will be making reference to a paper called Large Language Models are Zero-Shot Time Series Forecasters. Aside from some conjectures about transformers and scope for future research and development towards the end of the video. So what is time series forecasting using LLMs all about? LLMs can predict future values in time series data without being specifically trained on time series tasks. How is this possible? Let's go over some background information. What are large language models? Large language models, or LLMs, are artificial intelligence systems designed to understand and generate human-like text based on the input they receive. These models are trained on large amounts of diverse textual data to learn pattern structures and nuances of human language. LLMs can be used for text generation, translation, question answering, and text analysis, and so much more. So what is usually used for time series forecasting? Traditional time series forecasting uses statistical methods like ARIMA. Other methods include modern deep learning techniques, such as RNNs. They are a type of neural network architecture well suited for time series forecasting due to their ability to capture temporal dependencies and sequential information. So why should we try LLMs? LLMs are zero shot. This means they are able to perform a task without specific training or fine tuning on that task. LLMs can bridge the gap between traditional and modern methods of time series forecasting. It can handle complex and large scale data like deep learning models, as well as leverage knowledge of patterns it's learned from text-based training. All in all, LLMs approach time series forecasting as a next token prediction problem in text. They encode time series data as a string of numerical digits and use the language model's generative abilities to extrapolate future values. So what are the steps involved in implementing LLM methodology to time series forecasting? First, pre-process the time series data. Second, tokenization. Third, embedding. Fourth, positional encoding. Fifth, self-attention. Sixth, sampling and forecasting. And lastly, post-processing. The first step is to pre-process or rescale the data. Normalization in time series analysis refers to the process of scaling the values of a time series to a standard range. The goal is to bring all the values of the time series to a similar scale. In the paper, a normalization process is used to scale data points between 0 and an alpha percentile, lying between 0 and 1. This percentile is chosen in order to account for outliers. Now the data is ready to be used. The second step is to tokenize the data. This involves converting the numerical time series data into a string of numerical digits. Tokenization breaks down the encoded time series data into smaller units that the language model can understand. Byte pair encoding, or BPE, is a commonly used tokenization technique. However, the authors of the paper discovered that the BPE method breaks single numbers into awkward chunks that don't align with the digits. This can make arithmetic operations more difficult and affect the model's ability to learn patterns accurately. Instead, the authors decided to separate the digits with spaces and the time steps with commas to force a separate tokenization of each digit. This will ensure that the model does not output a weird token during sampling. The third step is embedding. Tokenized digits are converted into vector representations. This is similar to how words are embedded for traditional natural language processing tasks. For example, take the sentence, I love cupcakes. A tokenized version would be, I love cupcakes. 
In this simple example, these tokenized words are converted into a three-dimensional vector representation. with each vector being assigned ones and zeros based on a prompt. If the word love was included in a prompt, I and cupcakes would be assigned zero. And love would be assigned one. LLMs typically have much higher dimensional vectors representations. The fourth step is positional encoding. This involves maintaining the order of digits in a sequence. This is similar to how the order of words is important to the meaning of the sentence. Take our previous example. I love cupcakes. I is given position 1, love is given position 2, and cupcakes is given position 3. Changing the positions of these words removes the meaning of the sentence. The same can be said for the order of digits in a sequence. The fifth step is self-attention or relationship encoding. This involves analyzing relationships between parts of a sequence, similar to how relationships between words in a sentence can affect the meaning of a sentence. Take this sentence for example. The man knocked on the door, the lady came down holding a book, and opened it for him. The word it in the sentence refers to the door. However, it's not made clear whether it refers to the book or the door. The relationship between it and door is essential to the meaning of the sentence. The same can be said for the relationship amongst digits in a sequence. Relationship encoding involves identifying patterns and dependencies amongst digits representing the time series. The sixth step is sampling and forecasting. Multiple samples are drawn from the LLM by generating completions of the encoded time series. The number of samples can be specified. Each sample represents a possible extrapolation of the time series. At each time step, the statistics of the samples are calculated. This can include measures such as median, mean, or quantiles. These statistics provide point estimates or probabilistic forecasts for the time series. Various techniques can be used to control the sampling process, like temperature scaling, logic bias, and nuclear sampling. These techniques help to control the randomness of the generated samples. The model then generates predictions for the next tokens in the sequence. This is done by the transformer. The last step is post-processing. This step involves analyzing the outputs generated by the transformer model. Modeling continuous likelihoods involves representing numbers as discrete tokens and then converting them into continuous distributions. This is achieved by dividing the range of numbers into bins and assigning a uniform distribution to each bin. Each data point is then assigned a probability based on the bin it falls into. Probabilistic forecasting is a technique used in time series analysis to provide a range of possible future outcomes along with their associated probabilities. Unlike deterministic forecasting, which provides a single point estimate, probabilistic forecasting takes into account the uncertainty inherent in predicting future values. This step is done outside of the transformer. Using large language models for time series forecasting offers several advantages. LLMs can extrapolate time series data without any specific training or fine tuning on the specific data sets. This eliminates the need for specialized knowledge of fine tuning procedures and reduces computational resources required for training. They're well suited for scenarios with limited data availability. They can leverage their broad pattern extrapolation capabilities to make accurate forecasts, even with limited training data. LLMs can naturally represent multimodal distributions, which is particularly useful for time series forecasting. They can capture complex patterns and variations in the data, allowing for more accurate predictions. 
They can handle non-numerical text to represent missing values, making them more flexible in dealing with incomplete time series data. LLMs can incorporate textual side information to improve forecasting accuracy. Additionally, they can answer questions and provide explanations for their predictions, making interpretation much easier. This is similar to adding exogenous variables to an ARIMA type model. Increasing the size of LLMs generally improves their performance on time series forecasting tasks. So they're scalable with model size. It does, however, come with a few challenges. Language models tokenize numbers based on their frequency of occurrence in the training data. This can result in numbers being broken down inconsistently, making it challenging for the model to learn basic numerical operations. LLMs may have a limited context window, which can be a challenge when dealing with multivariate time series problems that require a larger context. The limited context window can affect the ability of LLMs to capture long-term dependencies and patterns in the time series data. If important information is outside the context window, the model may not be able to consider it when making predictions. This can lead to suboptimal forecasting performance. Current LLM architecture may have limitations in performing precise arithmetic and recursive operations which can be a challenge for certain complex time series forecasting tasks. It would be helpful at this stage to see some real performance stats. The authors did experiments to test the zero-shot forecasting ability of LLMs by comparing LLM time, which uses GPT-3 and LLAMA-2 to many popular time series baselines. The three datasets used were DOTS, Monash, and Informa which are considered benchmark time series datasets. Looking at the deterministic results, LL time with base model GPT-3 or LAMA-2 has the best or second best performance on many deterministic time series benchmarks, such as mean absolute error or MAE. MAE is a useful metric for assessing the accuracy of a predictive model by quantifying the average absolute errors between predicted and actual values. The lower the MAE, the better the model's predictive performance. Looking at the probabilistic results, when using probabilistic metrics like negative log likelihood or NLL and continuous ranked probability score or CRPS, LLM time outperforms all baselines. NLL focuses on the likelihood of observed outcomes under the predicted distribution, while CRPS evaluates the entire predicted distribution's alignment with the true distribution. LLMs for the win. LLMs seem to be an exciting tool for time series forecasting, but there's still room for research and development. Apart from making improvements to any limitation, it would be promising to investigate effective procedures for fine-tuning LLMs on time series data. LLMs could also benefit from improved uncertainty estimation. Since time series data often contains missing values and comes from many different sources, it does not have the consistency of image and audio inputs. Time series data and applications like weather and finance often involve making predictions based on a limited set of observations. This limited information makes accurately predicting specific points in the future challenging. As a result, estimating uncertainty becomes crucial given the vast range of possible outcomes. We now have a better idea of how LLM methodology can be applied to much more than previously imagined. Large-scale pre-training is commonly used for vision text tasks. It's not typically used for time series modeling. However, LLMs can bridge this gap and offer promising results for time series forecasting. We can't predict what new and exciting developments might emerge in this space. Or can we?